In this video, we'll go through a real-world diagnosis and repair of a coolant leak in a Kawasaki Vulcan. Along the way, we'll show you how to remove and adjust the clutch cable and remove the clutch cover. And we'll show how the clutch cover is integrated into the design of the water pump, the starter motor, the timing chain, and the clutch release mechanism. I hope you come along. Okay, let's see if we can find this leak. I've taken off the gas tank and the air intake. I put on a um, pressure tester for the cooling system. And here's the problem here is um, I've got all this coolant leaking down here. Where is it coming from? I think probably this spot here. So let's just pump it up. I want to make sure there's no coolant in the oil. So I've clearly shown that I've got a leaking seal right here. Now this is a metal pipe and it's got an L shape to it as you can see and so the only way I'm going to get this out is if I take this whole clutch plate off. The way to do that is first take the exhaust off and then I have to take this part of the frame off. So I'll start with the exhaust couple of Allen screws here and we'll pull the exhaust out of the way and give ourselves more room. This is six millimeter. Here I managed to get the front pipe off without the rear. The two are attached together so you may find it easier to take both off at the same time. But let's start off with these two bolts here. Okay, I fiddled a bit with this uh, brake switch and wasn't quite sure how it came undone. Eventually I just took off this end, which was up in here, and uh, then took off the other end and now we're free. I think we're just about free enough that we don't have to take off the rest of the brake system. Now there's a secret to getting this clutch uh, undone, and uh, the clutch is adjustable at both ends, but even with that it's hard to get it uh, into place. and so. You're going to need uh, to adjust this turnbuckle. Now this is a right-hand turnbuckle, and this is the male end, and that's the female end. And uh, you'll need a 10 millimeter open end wrench and two 12s. And the first thing you want to do is put the 10 onto this, and then slide this locking nut, this is the locking nut here, all the way down to here. Once that's there, then you slide this one down this way. And as you turn this, that shortens the cover and increases the slack on the cable. Now it'll be a lot easier to get undone. Now let's do the clutch. There are three points of adjustment for the clutch. The first is up here at the handles and then you screw this all the way in like so to give yourself as much room as you can. Here's a better shot of it. There's a little tab right there. I'll put needle nose on here and see if I can flick this little tab out. Okay, to save you a little bit of time, um, when you take this off, make sure this slot is lined up with this slot, which is lined up with this slot. And once you have enough free play down below, you get enough free play to be able to just slide this out of that little hole there. So now to get the clutch cable out at this end, you, you, the secret is to get lots of room. And once you get a lot of room, you can get it twisted sideways. And then once you get it twisted sideways, you can slide this out like that. So now the clutch cable is completely free. Then once this clutch cable is completely free, you can completely unscrew this nut here. To allow this part to slide back and then it comes out like so. Okay, I think we're ready to take this bar out. These are 8mm Allen, two of them here and two of them there. And these are 12mm Crescent. Now to the front of this clutch cover is this connection here and rather than undo it here, which we could do, I decided to just undo the hose. Okay, let's get this clutch cover off. These are five millimeter. I've learned from experience that you want to be very careful at this stage. Make sure you take them out in order and label them. This bolt here is really long. All the rest are sort of medium sized except for these three. So that clip is here, and then these three are short. This one's a medium size. You can see the short ones. Don't get them mixed up. 
Okay, all the bolts are undone and as expected it's stuck on there. And uh, there are some little lips here that uh, look like they might be amenable to tapping with a dead blow hammer. This baby wants to come off. Yeah, you can feel it move. Okay, now look at this. On the basis of the dealer's repair manual I had this taped forward. But when I was pulling the case, you can see as I pull the case off, that lever moves, moves out. So it looks like the lever has to be out for the case to come off. All right, there we are. Okay, it took a while for these parts to come in. This is the uh, clutch cover gasket. It looks like I've got the right one. There's my part number there. And then um, here are these two rubber seals. And you might be tempted to use um, RTV here, but remember that these seals have to be retain some flexibility because when this pipe comes off, when you take the clutch cover off, it needs to be flexible enough that these seals need to give way. And so if you use RTV, it may be a bear to get this out the next time. So I went with the OEM seals. Okay, so this next part is just painstaking. This is a carbide scraper, and this thing's a little razor blade. And um, you just go around and you scrape all of the gasket off as best you can. Um, now the case is aluminum, so you want to be really careful. And it's very interesting. These are actually, they look like Healy coils to me. And so um, it looks like Kawasaki decided that just using the aluminum case for the bed of the threads was not good enough. They put Healy coils in all these bolts, which is a good design feature because otherwise you could end up with the kind of problems that you often end up in this situation. Now while I'm at it, let me to explain to you about this water pump. This water pump has two seals to it. There's the uh, water seal that keeps coolant out of the engine oil, or coolant away from the bearings, and then there's a deeper seal that keeps the oil out of the um, water pump area. And that deeper seal, if you need to change that, you actually have to take the whole motor out and split the case, so it's a huge problem. To change the um, outer seal, the water pump seal, what they call a mechanical seal, it's a lot easier. You just take this off, pop out the seal, and put a new one in. And I've, um, f I'm facing a dilemma today as to whether to do that now as a prophylactic measure, recognizing this bike is over 20 years old. Why not change the seal well while I'm at it now? But what I've, one of the things I've learned through the years is if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And so through my lifetime, I've, I've broken a lot of things that never needed to have be fixed. And this water pump is not leaking. There's no leaking out this weep hole here. If there was leaking coolant out of this weep hole, you'd have to change that seal. But there's been no leakage of coolant there, and fortunately no leakage of oil. And so rather than messing with it and potentially causing problems, I've decided to leave it alone. Now that may be a bad choice. I think many here would say, while you're here, while you've got this cover off, why not just refresh that seal? The seal is going to be cheap, and it'll save you the hassle of having to go in later. Okay, let me show you, show you some normal structures here. This is the starter motor here. There's a washer on there we'll leave in place. And uh, this is the, you can see just a bit of the timing chain right there with some timing chain guides. This is the timing chain for the rear cylinder. And of course it drives the overhead cam above. And this whole thing here is the clutch. And the clutch is uh, pulled in and out with this little bolt-like apparatus. Uh, let me zoom in for a closer look. So here's the inside of the clutch cover. We're looking from the inside of the engine out and cold coolant comes from the, the radiator here back to the impeller of the water pump and it's a centrifugal drive where it drives the coolant out and pressurizes it to go back up this channel through this little angular pipe here and back to the top of the engine to cool the engine down. Okay, this is really interesting. When you squeeze the clutch handle in to disengage the clutch, it pulls this thing out and then when you release the clutch to drive the motorcycle, it, the clutch is automatically pulled back in by springs. Let me show you a closer view of what this uh, looks like. This is the inside of the clutch cover looking out, and the um, clutch cable hooks on right here. And so when you squeeze the clutch in to disengage the engine, it pulls it this way. So how does that work? Well, you saw that thing that looked like the end of a bolt head. Uh, they call that the pusher for some reason, but in any case, that bolt head interacts right here. It's held right here. And when you squeeze the clutch in, it pulls it down, it pulls it outward, and then you release it. 
here are the seals here, and I just wanted to point out to you, I'm soaking them in soapy water according to the dealer's repair manual. Uh, normally I'd use something like silicone paste, which never dries, but uh, they specifically say not to do that, not to put oil on it. They want soapy water. And if you notice here, there's kind of a cone shape to this. And so the way this thing goes on is this way. So the cone goes in that direction. Okay, I'm a little nervous about this next part because in this spot here, we've got pressurized coolant and a thin rim that has to be 100% intact. And the reason, of course, is that pressurized coolant could leak through this area into the oil. And I wouldn't notice that until the next oil change. I don't mind if it leaks a little bit here. That's no big deal. And normally when I do water pumps, I don't uh, do much with the gasket aside. I usually like to use a dry gas, but in this case, I'm going to use some RTV type sealant to seal just this area here, just because I'm very anxious that it not leak in this particular position. This is high tack. It's just to stick it to the case. There. That shouldn't be enough to cause any harm. This is blue Loctite. The torque spec on these cover bolts is 95 inch pounds, so not all that tight. Once you get it all back together again, you're going to want to prime the bowl of the carb. So just shift to prime. That'll siphon uh, fuel into the bowl of the carb and allow you to start a little bit more easily. Okay, so you've noticed that I've got the rear wheel off the ground with the jack and the reason behind that is that my clutch isn't necessarily adjusted and I don't want the start motor to cause the bike to jump when, when I start it. So I'm going to start it in neutral and then shift it into gear and make sure that my clutch is uh, appropriately adjusted. Good, and now I'm checking the cooling system, waiting for the uh, thermostat to open so I can burp it. After a quick check for fuel, oil, and coolant leaks, I took it for a test drive. Here I'm checking for leaks after that. It all looks good. Thanks for watching.